Hi, kids. Uh, this instructional video is going to be on rotational inertia. Um, so yeah, so let's let's hop right to it here. So first, let's talk about something you guys know from first semester, which is inertia. Remember, inertia is the tendency for an object to keep its state of motion. Okay, so the inertia is the tendency for an object to keep its state of motion. What the heck does that mean? It means if an object is at rest, it's going to stay at rest. If an object is moving, it's going to stay moving. Um, another way you can think of this is inertia is the resistance for an object to accelerate, which is why inertia depends on mass. So, depends on mass. Okay, more mass, more inertia, which is why sumo wrestlers, typically really big guys, they have big inertia. It's hard to change their state of motion. Okay, that uh, if someone like me, if I was a sumo wrestler, I wouldn't be a very good sumo wrestler because it would be much easier to change my state of motion. But uh, that is inertia. Okay, it's so inertia, tendency for an object to keep its state of motion. If it's moving, it's going to stay moving. If it's not moving, it's going to stay at rest. Um, so rotational inertia, it's going to make sense. The tendency for an object to keep its state of rotation. So the tendency for an object to keep its state of rotation. So what the heck does that mean? Well that means if an object is not rotating, it's going to stay rotating. If an object is rotating, is rotating, it's going to stay rotating at a constant rotational speed. Um, now here's the big difference though. Okay, so where inertia depends on mass, Rotational inertia depends on the mass, but it also depends on the distribution of the mass. So it depends on depends on distribution of the mass. Okay, um, and this goes back to things like if you if you think about you know hey if I have this thing, and I want to balance it. If I try to do it like this, it's pretty easy to balance. If you do it like this, not so easy to balance because in this situation, the mass, which is up here, is located farther from the axis of rotation, which would be my hand. Okay, so it's going to rotate around this. Okay, so if the mass is farther from the axis of rotation, more rotational inertia. In this case, more rotational inertia means easier to balance, easy, easier to stay not rotating. Okay, and this explains why tightrope walkers carry really long poles. Uh, this is ex this explains when you try to when you walk along, why you go like whoa, you put your arms out so that you're going to increase your rotational inertia, make it harder for you to rotate, means easier for you to keep your state of rotation, which is not rotating. Um, if you have something like this or this, okay, this one, disc versus hoop, disc has more mass close to the axis of rotation, less rotational inertia. All the mass here is a distance R from the axis of rotation, more rotational inertia. So guess what? If you were to have these two race, okay, this one will always win. Why? Because it's easier to start it rotating. And you can see it will win. Hooray! Okay, you can see that. Okay, um, so this has less rotational inertia, so it's going to be you know easier to start it rotating. This has, like this, more rotational inertia, easier to keep it balancing. Okay, harder to start it rotating. Um, all of your, the rotational inertia, like, how do you find it where this was just, you know, mass over here? This was 
something times mr squared. You know, like, and again, you don't have to memorize this, but, you know, if it was a disk, it was one half mr squared. If it's a solid sphere, it was two fifths mr squared. Um, but I do want to talk about this mr squared one, because the one that you do need to understand is for a point mass. Well, a hoop, with a hoop, all the mass is located at a distance r away. So for, for I for a hoop, remember this is, the symbol for rotational inertia is I. For a hoop, it's mr squared, okay, which means if you knew the mass of this and I know the radius, I could find its rotational inertia. Well, guess what, though? For a point mass, or if you have something like a pendulum, okay, the I, the rotational inertia, is also going to be mr squared. Why? Because here's my axis of rotation. Let me do it a little bit shorter so you can see it. There's my axis of rotation, and all of the masses located distance r away. So, like, the I for this would also be mr squared. If you're talking about, like, a planet orbiting the sun, for example, I think I can go right here. So if I have the sun and I have a planet orbiting around it, well, again, all of the mass is a distance r away. They're essentially r away. So, like, that would be considered a point mass, mr squared. So that's rotational inertia. Hopefully that makes sense. Bucket!